It should be to accentuate, to accentuate the positives. It should be to enhance certain things. It should not be to present something that's not there. Makeup is not to alter or to give a false presentation of a person because what happens when the makeup is gone? question that gets asked from time to time is about makeup. Is makeup a sin? Or probably even more practical, a better question is, is wearing too much makeup a sin? Can it be a sin? Because makeup in and of itself, no, that's not a sin. But could it cross the line? Well, anything that you do in excess can cross the line and become a problem. Now, so let's just go ahead and look at what the Bible says about makeup. Not a lot, but there are some allusions to it in terms of how it's being used. Now, one of the things that you'll probably think of when you think of makeup and the Bible, especially a negative use of it or a negative view of it, would probably stem from Jezebel and her makeup, uh, what she puts on. And so when we go to 2 Kings 9.30, this is where she is getting ready to be killed. She knows she's going to die. And so nine, chapter 9, verse 30, when Jehu came to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it and she painted her eyes and adorned her head and looked out the window. And so what she's doing is she knows death is impending. So what does she do? She puts on makeup. Uh, she arranges her face uh, almost in a defiant sense uh, because she wants to kind of look like she's not concerned or what have you. Well, from, th from there, we get this understanding, this view that makeup is a bad thing. And so in the past, you've heard people say that those that put on makeup or too much makeup, you look like a Jezebel, you look like Jezebel. That's where this comes from. What she did in and of itself wasn't necessarily wrong or a bad thing. What she was doing is just making her face up, but she was doing so to be defiant. To, well, if you're going to kill me, I'm still going to look like I'm not dying. And so what she was basically saying was that even though I'm going to die, I'm also going to look good dying. That's kind of her point. And so is that a sinful thing? Well, she was dying not because of the makeup. She was dying because of who she was. But the point is, is makeup is the makeup that she put on. Is that a bad thing? Well, there's other passages that talk about makeup. For example, in Jeremiah 4.30, uh, we see this speaking about Israel. But it says, and you, O desolate one, what will you do? Although you dress in scarlet, although you decorate yourselves with ornament, ornament uh, of gold, although you enlarge your eyes with paint, in vain you make yourself be beautiful. Your lovers despise you. They seek your life. In and of itself, those things are not necessarily bad things. Now, notice what he says. And some of these things we can kind of see happening today. It says, will you dress in scarlet? In other words, putting on your, your best. Uh, is that a bad thing? No. Uh, decorate yourself with ornaments of gold. That's not necessarily a bad thing. That would can be. We'll come to that in a second. Although you enlarge your eyes with paint. In other words, you accentuate your eyes. Is that a bad thing? Well, no. Uh, in vain, you make up yourself. You make yourself beautiful. Uh, your lovers despise you. Well, now that's the issue towards the end. Uh, there's a vanity. There's a vainness to what you're doing, uh, meaning that it's pretentious. It's not true. It's not real. And therein lies the issue. If you are wearing makeup, it should be, as kind of the old women would say, and this might be where some might disagree, but it should be to accentuate, to accentuate the positives. It should be to enhance certain things. It should not be to present something that's not there. Makeup is not to alter or to give a false presentation of a person because what happens when the makeup is gone? If the makeup is there to add a sense of confidence, the problem is going to be when you take the makeup off. If your confidence, if the way you feel about yourself is tied to makeup, well, then now we got a problem because sometimes the makeup doesn't go on right, doesn't look right, or you don't have it on. What then? You want to be careful that you don't want it to define you. Now, can you do it to kind of, let's say, add a little bit more? Sure you can. As a matter of fact, there are certain people that go through certain makeup rituals. And you think about someone like an Esther who took months and months and months to get ready for uh, her becoming the queen. If we go to Esther chapter 2, verse 12, it says, Now, when, when the turn of each young lady came to go into the king Ahasuerus, after the end of his 12 months under the regulations for the women, for the days of their beautification were completed as follows, six months with oil of myrrh and six months with spices and the cosmetics of women. The young lady would go into the king in this way. Anything that she desired was given to her. Now, this is a long time, 12 months to get ready. Beautification, that's a lot. Well, obviously, women don't do that today. Some don't. Most don't. Some do. But the point is, uh, that was a little too extreme. Uh, 
But the point is, the question is, how much time should you allot towards making yourself look beautiful, making yourself look the way that you want to look, those sort of things? How much time? Well, as, as much as it takes, I guess, but not more than is necessary. That really ought to be the, the point, the key, not more than is necessary. Now, the question is going to be, well, how much is necessary? Again, if, you're, if your beauty for you is derived from how you look outwardly, well, then Houston, we've got a problem. In 1 Peter 3, 3, Peter says, your dormant must not merely be external, um, braiding the hair and wearing gold jewelry or putting on dresses, but let it be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable quality of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is precious in the sight of God. Now, he's not saying that those things are bad, braiding of the hair and wearing gold jewelry and so forth and putting on dresses. That's not a bad thing. But don't let that be how you see yourself, how you make yourself beautiful. If that's the only way that you are beautiful, well, then you are beautiful. Your beauty is in vain. Now, some may say, well, is that kind of in contradiction to what Paul says in 1 Timothy 2? No, it's not. But let's go there. He says in 1 Timothy 2, uh, verse 9, he says, Likewise, I want women to adorn themselves with proper clothing, modestly and discreetly, not with braided hair and gold or pearls or costly garments. But previously, look what we just saw here. He says in 1 Peter 3, uh, your adornment must not merely be or must not be externally braiding the hair and wearing gold jewelry. So are these at odds with each other? No, they're not. Paul's point here is that you sh how you should dress. So notice the words that are used here, the adjectives and so forth that are used to describe. Let's go back to it. He says, uh, adorn themselves with proper clothing. Now, the word for proper clothing, this is a word for respectable or the same way is used for modest. So do so in a respectable fashion. The clothing that you should wear, how you adorn yourself should be modestly, properly, professionally, uh, with modesty or modestly. And this is with respect honor. Uh, that's kind of how you want to dress. That's the fashion in which you want to do so. The point is not to be gaudy. The point is to be respectable so that the first thing and the only thing that stands out is the makeup, the looks, the eyelashes, the, the stuff on the side of the face, the earrings, the hair. If those are the things that stand out, well, then how is someone going to know much about you? The only lasting memory is going to be about what they see, the things that can be wiped off, the things that can be uh, washed off, the things that can be removed, the things that can stay, the things that will remain. That's who you ought to accentuate. That's Those are the things that you want to promote, the inward you, the, the quiet beauty about a person. There are those, and it's okay to do so, but too much time can be the problem. There are those that spend uh, hours in front of the mirror getting themselves ready. How much time in your life have you given up just for the sake of trying to look beautiful for a few moments. Uh, that's precious time that could be missed. And I think the problem is that oftentimes people spend too much time on their beauty, not thinking that they are beautiful enough. And truth be told, in many cases, they probably are. You end up spending so much time putting things on your skin and on your hair that ends up damaging your hair, it ends up damaging your skin. And to what you have to turn around and do more and more and more maintenance to your face and to your hair and things like that. And so sometimes what you do might end up be self-defeating, might cause more of a problem down the line. Again, if there's something that you want to do to kind of touch up, that's fine. I'm not trying to give anyone some sort of beauty tips or secrets because Lord knows I don't know those. But the point is, you should focus on the things that are more important. And so what Paul says, and this is kind of a this is kind of the thing that I would say that you need to think about, whether it's putting on makeup, whether it's taking care of your hair, whether it's the clothes that you wear. Paul says this in First Corinthians 10 31, whether you eat, whether you drink, whatever you do, including makeup, including hair, including jewelry, including your clothes, do it all to the glory of God. Whatever you do, you want to glorify God. And so if you think that what you're doing in the mirror is glorifying God, well, then amen. Uh, if you think it's to glorify yourself, now we see the problem. Does that mean that you can't do anything to look to look presentable, to look nice? That's not what I'm saying. The point is, don't overdo it to where all someone is going to think about is the outward appearance, how much, how long the eyelashes are, how long or how uh, the eyebrows look and the, the makeup, the lipstick, the, the color of the foundation, things, things I have no idea what I'm talking about, the hair and so forth. 
that shouldn't be what someone remembers. It shouldn't be that you are two different people depending upon the time of the day because it depends upon how much makeup you have on or when you have on makeup. You should be who you are all the time and you don't want to present a false image of yourself. And so I would say those would be the things that you should remember, but above all else, do everything to glorify God. So is makeup a sin? No, is too much makeup a sin? Uh, it could be, but I'll let you guys be the judge of that, but just take those things into consideration. But makeup in and of itself is not a sin. Amen. <laughs>